Greetings everybody. I'm going to make a little video to talk about weeds or this thing people call weeds. Um, first I want to apologize if if the sound quality is not too good because it's windy and I know that the wind like usually really messes up the audio track on these t small little uh, handheld recorders but hopefully um, I'll try to shield it a bit here okay now this thing people call weeds yeah see the wind is picking up here okay so this is the state of the garden right now and someone might say wow you're growing a lot of weeds oh boy and i'm like no i'm not really growing these per se they're growing by themselves this is what people call weeds and it's uh mixed in with some of the uh, seeds the food quote food that I put in there yeah I don't know this this wind is really bad all right now look at this now the reason I'm making this video is because the in my philosophy in my my way of gardening uh, sacred agriculture I don't I don't view um, plants as weeds and so I don't use any uh, herbicides, um, anything. Basically, I'll remove some of these beautiful plants if I need room for the ones that I'm growing. But that's that's uh, that's different than seeing these as a uh, the enemy. And okay, so what what is it about these beautiful plants? Is that First of all, you see how it's covering this bed. This is excellent. You don't, you don't want to have exposed, you don't want to have the soil of your garden exposed to the sun, unless you really, you're trying to dry it out or something. I mean, but even then, like the thing is, you want the plants because they, first of all, they have roots and the roots, are doing what they need to do underground right below ground and when these plants die the roots die and they also become organic matter and it just increases the organic content of your soil plus all the life that feeds on this uh, all the insects that feed on this stuff and the uh, micro fauna and here's the bonus See, during we're we're just coming out of winter, and and a lot of t um, most of the greens that we put in that you know f what we call food don't really grow in the winter, except for kale and maybe uh, some collard greens or stuff like that. But this here is perfectly edible, and all of this is edible. This is chickweed here. Okay. And if you do some research on chickweed, you will see it's very nutritious. It's 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 also medicinal, and this is wild geranium. It's also edible, also medicinal, and they grow together. There's more chickweed here than the geranium, so I um, I harvest this here, and then um, I harvest them together. I don't really. I used to to try to tease them apart because I thought geranium wasn't so edible but I actually found that it is and it's actually good for uh, sore throats and things like that you know coming out of winter that could be a good thing so this video is basically about the fact that if you stop seeing weeds this thing uh, people call weeds as your enemy it's just it's all in your head you know it's sh you shift your perspective if you uh, expand your consciousness you you realize that what you were trying to fight and to kill is actually food and medicine okay it's a big uh, 
change, you know, a, a paradigm change that, that has to occur in your mind, but um, it has to be done if, if you, you know, if we're going to move away from this very uh, unhealthy relationship with nature and grow some, you know, grow ourselves as humans, not stay locked into this, like, infantile state <laughs> of learned helplessness. So yeah, you you could feed yourself with this thing people call weeds. Now there's a lot of it here, like whoo! I mean, t I, many families could be eating these greens, you know, and and have this medicine. So, and here, like here, this bed I made during winter, and I put in some uh, just before winter. Or so, and you know, some of the kale had died, uh, or almost all died, and I I just cut it all back. And see, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, it's gonna grow. It's gonna. They're gonna. I'm gonna have a spring crop, you know. So I, what I thought I would do here is just introduce you a little bit, because I'm not really gonna go into the details of of what, how to, what's the medicinal aspects of each of these wonderful plants people call weeds, herbs, you know, herbal remedies, food. <laughs> But um, this is just a selection of books that that really like will take you really far if you're interested in getting your own information. This series here, the uh, Earthwise Herbal, um, the Guide to the New World Medicinal Plants by Matthew Wood, are very good. I've met Matthew here in uh, Career, Mississippi. Is a very interesting man. He's like poised to become like one of the, uh, you know, North American experts at this herbal uh, medicine, integrative medicine. You know, they're trying to. Well, they're going to bring this in to modern medicine, right? They're going to need this kind of like information, right? This is like has it all. Wild edible plants. You, you always need a good book of your wild edible plants. Peterson Field Guides are. I find them really good. This one is for Eastern Central North America. See, the, some people see the, these quote weeds as medicinal herbs and some as food, but they're both. And I, I'll try to make a link at the end of this video about what I, how I see that. Um, this um, Thomas Easley, Stephen Horn. I also met Thomas Easley, very nice man, very knowledgeable. The Modern Herbal Dispensary uh, Medicine Making Guide, you know, talks a lot about how to process these herbs. Indian Herbology of North America by Hutchins. Elliot Cohen, The Plant Spirit Medicine. This is a different take on, uh, on the, um, why these plants are healing. American Medicinal Plants by Millspaw. Okay, now the, these books, I mean, that's base. That's enough to get you like pretty much. I mean, here in North America, uh, get you going <laughs> for more than what you're probably going to be needing at least for the first few years. And uh, you know, like Matthew Wood and. Um, Thomas Easley and most of these people into these Amer uh, these medicinal plants are really trying to bring in a scientific perspective to this here. You know, they 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 just don't they're not just taking th stories from people. That, although they do have wonderful stories about where where the herbs come from and what they were used for in the past and how and it came, but. And there, it's like what's happening is pe people are trying to understand what makes these plants heal, and they go to science for it. My my perspective on it is that is useful. It's a useful way to communicate and to uh, make to give trust to people. But I'm. I used to be in the world of science, and I'm I've moved away from that because I don't I don't need that for um, 
to build my uh, confidence or trust. <laughs> I see this now uh, differently. Um, there's like, I'm not totally like in the same mode as Elliot Cohen, who talks about like the spirit, you know, behind the plant that is the medicine, which is more esoteric in, in the sense that the, uh, it, it, it's more aligned with the, uh, the belief system of re of religion, like Hinduism or, or, um, other religions that talk about deities or or um, elemental beings that are behind the growth and the properties, the living properties of plants. It's like what they're saying is that there's a spirit, a conscious spirit associated to each plant and that being is is actually the being that is doing the healing not the plant per se so 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 therefore if you're looking for chemicals you know if you try to understand the world through a series of chemicals um, you will find a chemical associated to some sort of relief of a symptom of uh, on the physical body but that's not the cause the cause is something else that's like a correlated to in the uh, as far as the material uh in the material world right um i that's more like i subscribe more to that to the fact that it's the healing occurs because of consciousness and but that does not exclude the physical realm um at things occurring on the physical realm but the consciousness um in my view world view is is more linked to the first cause the root cause without co without consciousness uh, awareness of what you're doing first of all you wouldn't be seeking these plants uh, you wouldn't have you know the propensity to go find a plant and to to use it to make yourself feel better you know to so therefore you would exclude all of this because of your perception your awareness of the world your you, the, the state of your consciousness so being aware and conscious of this brings you to the plant world and if the plant world has also its own proper consciousness then again we're dealing with consciousness so you know you know where i'm going right with this so consciousness is involved here this is what sacred agriculture basically is about. It's about growing your consciousness as a part of healing. And the, the way to do it is through building a relationship with the plant world, which can be done by gardening. Gardening is a pretext to enter into a spiritual relationship with nature and it's this relationship with nature that builds and expands your consciousness and grows your consciousness and heals okay so let me just walk through and you know I mean I was gonna I put a little I was gonna talk about like for example in this book what what they say about like chickweed you see um, what parts you should be using you know chickweed is good for uh, bronchitis pleurisy coughs rheumatism inflammation you know and uh, how all this one heals cancer this one is good for the kidneys this one is um, but um, I think uh, I'm just gonna go instead just walk around and show you these plants like so I've already showed you like the chickweed and it's everywhere see now there's gonna be more wind again because uh, I'm not crouched down okay so the chickweed is if you read up on chickweed you're gonna be like amazed you're like oh holy it does so many things right as far as the healing goes but I mean it's food also food consciousness healing consciousness see how it's all linked then um, there's this little plant here. It's called cleavers. 
it's very okay you most people know this plant because when it's ripe it, it makes these little brown hairy balls <laughs> it's a weird thing to be saying uh, that stick on your uh, socks or if you have a dog you're constantly taking these little seed balls out, you know out of the hair like your dog's uh, hair okay but these this here is also very quote healing and I, I I think it's good for the like urinary system but then again you know this is what I mean this is what people say and they take this from someone else who said it you know and they take it from someone else who said it and these things go way back I mean they go way back to the medieval age sometimes some of these things you know and uh, some of the um, healers of the time before science and before we knew like all these chemicals right these people experimented with this stuff and they're like hey man you didn't make a tea of this and if you're hurting in your inside your inside your your urinary system this will help you know and um and so as some of these have been researched in the lab and they now oh yeah well it did work you know we tried it on people and, and uh and then they're trying to find the chemical um some of them have never been researched in the lab but still there's a knowledge of what it does based on observation you know trial and error a lot of the most people into this herbology thing have don't have the extensive experience of knowing that for themselves that it actually does heal this or that they just read it in a book copy paste it on their website and they go with it and and, and i'm not saying that's wrong because there's a belief is a big part see belief is linked to uh perception awareness consciousness and all that if you believe in something then chances are it's going to help you um, it's the, uh, what some people call the placebo effect. Now, I might, you know, this is my own definition. Um, the oregano. <laughs> it's just like, it's getting bigger with wild geranium in it, you know. <laughs> uh, so, you see how these wonderful green medicinal plants are everywhere. And I just saw this one here today. I was like, oh, I'm so happy. This here is wild mustard green and I have been trying every year I collect seeds and I put them out and I never get any they're doing what they want to do <laughs> and now this one popped up. I am gonna be I'm take care of this who you know I'm gonna like treat this here special because wild mustard green once it starts going and it likes a place it it takes over and then these leaves oh my god like if you like mustard greens this is has even like a more sharp like mustard taste and they and you and they grow like crazy and you don't need to do anything they just like they're quote weeds oh sorry about the wind here not only are they like quote weeds they're also noxious weeds which means the government here in the united states sees this as a pest and actually there's some programs where they they ask that farmers like get rid of it and i think huh, in the organic certification there when when there's a noxious weed and something that is quote a pest to get rid of you get exemptions to how you can eradicate um this quote pest which means that if you try the organic herbicides and they don't work you're allowed to go with something even harsher without getting penalized on your certification it's crazy because this is food okay <laughs> and I'm sure like see someone would see oh no it's healing it, it it's like you know antispasmodic or this or that now nah, see it as you see it I like to eat it <laughs> and it's food and and me building a relationship with it is part of my healing okay and uh, expanding my consciousness this this relationship with whatever this is okay uh, I know its name but I don't know it fully I'm not I don't know I can't I don't claim to know everything about the plant world oh boy the wind is picking up sorry um, I might as well go this direction since it's this is all right here cleavers everywhere um, 
you know, you, uh, what I read is you make a tea. It also helps for freckles, they say, you know, and uh, blotches uh, like on your skin. And you make a tea and you drink it. You, you, there's also like if you make your tea hot or cold, changes stuff. It often has to do with the essential oils coming out or not. It's a whole different, like, uh, whole different story about essential oils here but yeah and uh, what I wanted to say is that when this here cleavers look at so much of it it's like just unbelievable like so much food here <laughs> I was like this is like I don't be I don't really need to be growing like kale and stuff like that right now I mean this is like who you learn about the plant world like this here boy you, you start to wonder why am I putting all these fake G GMO or not GMO but these genetically altered uh, species that we call food. And I, I talked about that in my last video, like, you know, kale, cabbage, carrots, potatoes, all of that is all genetically altered. Uh, because you see, this wild mustard green is, is actually the, the or, original this is creation. See, creation uh, made this, and then they started to mess around with the seeds and stuff, and they created kale. They created like five, six species, you know, like out of this. And all of these Franken species uh, are very hard to grow. They're very demanding. You need to pamper them, but you don't need to pamper the original one, okay? So yeah, this is another thing, like the consciousness grows to the point where you're like, why am I not just gardening or wild edibles? Why am I not just trying to understand and work with them rather than grow all this stuff that is so demanding? Um, yellow dock is um, another one. You could eat the roots, you could eat the leaves when they're young. There's um, listeria, wisteria, sorry. You could, don't eat the seeds, but you could eat the flowers. They're actually very, uh, I take the whole thing and I just put it in water and it makes a very sweet, aromatic tasting water. It's delicious. It's like, you know, I'm gonna go here with you guys. I know the video is gonna, it's already 20 minutes, but whatever, you know, like, I'm not gonna make another one of this. So now the wind, sorry. Let me cross here. My truck is coming by. I need to run a little bit. Okay, all these patches here are um, spiderwort. Let me show you the flower. Now, I, I often just harvest the top, the flower. You could harvest the leaves. You could harvest the stem when it's young cut it up, saute it. The flowers, you could eat raw, put it in salad. You could steam it, saute it, you could eat it raw. I'm gonna eat this one raw, <laughs> okay. Um, there's a little slime, a little bit of slime in it. Uh, if you read up on this kind of stuff, the slime often has like healing properties. I mean like okra is slimy. Things that are slimy <laughs> fall into a category the slimy things. There's always someone associating some sort of medicinal property to the sliminess. I'm putting it just like in simple terms. <laughs> um, there's a, if you go back to like old medieval type <laughs> medicine, that's what they were looking at. You know, they call it the signatures. Uh, um, when they look at if a, if a plant looks like a heart, then it must, if the leaf looks like a heart, then it must be good for the heart. You know, if it uh, looks like a hand, then it must be good for the hand. Uh, so if it's slimy, it must be good for uh, mus mucilaginous, uh, like maybe the lungs, expector and expectorant or something, you know, saying that. Strawberry, strawberries here. Strawberries are like it's interesting. This, these are like, they love the wood chips. I already talked about this, but man, they just grow like crazy. So yeah, all these. Uh, so so the garden like okay looks like a mess, and I know like I've had people comment on my uh, on some YouTube videos and say your garden looks like a mess, your plants look weak. 
okay? And I'm like, I'm not gonna deny it looks like a mess, but this is not a mess. This is nature. This is actually, this is, this is nature reclaiming, you know, what, what I did. My, it's basically, I would almost say reclaiming my arrogance because gardening, okay, is basically you, you're forcing your will on nature. And if you turn around long enough, nature's going to take back and it's actually going to heal see itself from your from your uh, from what you've done to it <laughs> and it's like that's why i always find it very funny when you read like what people in biodynamic agriculture have to say about their practice where they say they're quote healing the earth but you know yeah. That's very arrogant, I mean, because nature knows how to heal itself, and if uh, a biodynamic farmer is tilling the ground, putting cow manure, killing deer to get the guts to put in chamomile or whatever, and then compost that, and then spread that on the land, and then, uh, you know, do whatever they need to, to get whatever they want to grow, and then they call it healing the earth because it's quote spiritual because it's based on anthroposophy which is a new age religion anyways i i see it as like when when my garden looks like a mess because there's all these quote weeds and everything's it's nature nature is healing itself i'm not healing nature by gardening okay i'm building a relationship with it but I'm forcing my will. We're kind of co-creating together, and that is for the purpose of trying to heal myself, and and uh, hopefully nature. You know, I think nature is very giving, so it's 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 going to participate into healing myself. That's the plant world. Okay, this here I brought you here just because I wanted to show you yopan. This uh, is like a, I would say a shrub because I, it doesn't really become a huge tree. Now this shrub, this yopan, is just uh, Elex vomitorium. It's it's a healing in um, in a sense that I don't understand it personally, but the the natives would uh, make a, a strong brew of this and then drink it, and I think it had to do with when they wanted to like have this um, passage into manhood or something like that. And they would cleanse with it, and they would vomit. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, if it's some sort of, like, detox, or if it's some spiritual aspects I don't understand, but they would basically use this to vomit. Or, or I don't know if it, they, it was to vomit, but vomiting was the, uh, <laughs> the result of drinking a strong brew of this. So that's why it's Ilex Vomitorium, right? But it's Yopan for most people. Now, the vomiting is, one could say, is caused by the, the chemicals in here that it's probably the caffeine. See, there's a lot of caffeine in this. So I've, I make sometimes a tea with this here, and I prepare it the old Japanese style by um, by fermenting it like a little bit, or just like letting it uh, letting it um, dry out a little bit um, in the sun or in the shade, and then I uh, fry it in a skillet with no oil, just like to toast it a little bit, and then I, I make my tea with it or my coffee and it's actually like see there's so much caffeine in this then it grows everywhere one doesn't even need to buy coffee you know like this is it and if you mix it uh, with the seeds of the cleavers and you grind the cleavers it'll taste even more like um, like dry, like roasted because of this roasted seeds you know anyways there's um, Many trees, many shrubs. There's magnolia, sweet gum growing around here. I've made some essential oils with them. This is bayberry. If you look this up, very healing. They used to make candles with the seeds, with the with the wax. And uh, yeah, 
so that's that's it you know like there's so many I, I could go on and on look at this here this is a okra and it volunteered here I had some sort of composting area where I where whenever I display some of the plants that I didn't want to grow in a certain place I'd put them here and somehow some seeds came here and this okra came back and I let the seeds fall and who knows maybe more okra will come back <laughs> So yeah, that's it. There's so many other things that I could be pointing out that are edible, I mean, or medicinal. Uh, but, I, but you know, I'm not hypocritical in the fact that I know that at one point I'm gonna remove a lot of these and they're going to seed. And once they're like at a certain stage, you know, they're not, they're too tough to eat. I'll, I'll remove them because I want to grow some sort of plant that is uh, more like quote a crop food you know like here I might put carrots or zucchinis or cucumbers or something and I know that's not necessary and I'm I know I'm probably going to be moving away from that but I'm not there you see it's a it's like my consciousness is expanding toward towards the the wild edibles and which happen to be medicinal which for me happens to be part of a healing process. So at one point, whatever I grow here will be more out of pleasure for my taste buds or... But, but having said that, like I, I printed out like something here before I, I, I terminate this video. I was just trying to drive a point here, how all plants are actually medicinal, you know? I seriously believe that, everything. Like I made essential oils out of magnolia and then I made it uh, out of sweet gum and these essential oils, I mean you, you, if you could smell magnolia, if you make your own essential oils and you, you have the best quality magnolia essential oil and you smell that, it lifts depression, I, I'm, anxiety, you feel so much better. It's, it's, it's like, wow, you know? Um, so look at this here. I printed this out. It's basically, what I, the point I wanted to make is that how we perceive food, um, plants, certain plants as food, but they're all medicinal. And even in terms of modern science, not even talking about the fact that there might that there might be a spirit behind the plant the building the relationship with that spirit is heals your spirit by making you remember deeper things of this uh, of this reality but just here like you look at vegetables beets broccoli carrots kale sweet potatoes cabbage avocados banana cherry figs lemons papaya pomegranates barley all of these here okay you look at the they have benefits okay beets is col coloretic broccoli antiviral carrots antioxidant green collard greens anti-inflammation Kale, lowering cholesterol, see, yams, in, in, inhibiting hema, hematomegaly, whew, whatever that has to do with the blood or something. Cabbage, <clears throat> countering alcohol hangover. Now that's interesting. Just don't drink alcohol. <laughs> oh boy. Avocado, uh, bananas, relieving cirrhosis, cherries, antioxidant, you know, and so on and so on. And there's a whole other page that I got printed out here too. And so, and then they have the molecules, see, like for beets, it's the betaine. For the yams, it's the diosgenin. Like for the bananas, it's the pectin, and so on and so on and so on. So when you eat greens or, or you eat fruits, okay, you you're not only eating because you're hungry and it'll relieve your hunger you're there's actually some healing going on that you're not even aware of and so this is from these franken foods i mean i'm sorry i call it franken foods maybe figs aren't or cherries aren't you know the bananas are because if you look at the the our bananas compared to the wild to the wild uh, ancestor of a banana which is like maybe just this big and has tons of seeds in it our bananas have been like genetically like altered seriously 
but um so is broccoli you know <laughs> carrots woo carrots that have nothing to do with the or their origin but they still have all these 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 healing properties now if you go back to the wild edibles you got to know that they also have it but they're also food so yeah so that's the point i wanted to make with this video now, it wasn't about how to grow kale or how to do this or that it was about the fact that nature is reclaiming this garden is quote healing what i did to it which was scrape the soil <laughs> And try to force force my way into grow into like providing a space for these other like species that need extra pampering to grow. And nature's saying, this is what I want to do. But I'm capable of seeing now that what it's doing is healing itself by but also providing healing food for me so fascinating this is why like I call this sacred agriculture because it's really trying to reclaim something trying to take some all the perverted aspects of agriculture out and, and bringing back a more spiritual like view point of view the sacredness of it it's like yeah, I keep saying I'm going to make a video just on on what sacred agriculture is, and, and I will, but um, I need to collect my thoughts properly to do that. Because, like, already, you know, this, I mean, I already have some, some people that have a hard time dealing with this, uh, just the fact that I don't put fertilizers or pesticides or stuff like that, you know, they... They think this is wrong. It's a wrong, wrong way of doing stuff. It, I'm getting more into the spiritual aspects. I know that as I progress, like it'll get weirder and weirder, <laughs> and then, um, but that's okay. And then, like most, I mean, some of you will, like, hit the unsubscribe button. <laughs> At one point, it'll be time for you to unsubscribe from this uh, channel because it's going to get way too weird, <laughs> you know as I move more towards what what it is sacred agriculture all right so there you have it folks 37 minutes have a nice uh, have a nice afternoon it's beautiful here what are we uh, end of February lucky us eh? living in the south okay bye bye